words of the great Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear. We're back! Welcome to my channel again, guys. It's been a great summer uh, break from the train layout. Um, some of you may or may not know from some of my previous videos, I do a lot of racing, hill climbs, time trials, things of that nature with the SCCA. So that's what I spend uh, most of my time in the four months here in the South doing. I do have a channel, Gizmo Motorsports. I don't post a lot, not quite as much as here, but I do some stuff. So if you're ever interested in checking out some of what I do in my off time from trains, uh, head over there and, and take a look. So wanted to uh, quickly do a, another layout update video as a lot has changed, uh, as you maybe could see behind me uh, since the last time I've done one. Um, some of this stuff may have appeared in some of my previous videos, but didn't really touch on it or uh, talk about it. So figured I would take a moment and kind of share some of that. Now, since uh, the last video this year, I have acquired a few new items, but also have gotten rid of a few items. <laughs> Take a walk around let's check out some stuff and uh see what's been going on in the world of gizmo trains so the layout itself has changed quite a bit since the last update as you can see lots has been added lots of details are coming together to really form this layout to give its own identity been putting in a lot of work so let's take a quick look at some of those items in detail one of the biggest changes is literally the biggest. The mountain has taken shape. Uh, this actually went together pretty easily over a weekend, uh, pretty recently. So for this one here, I used the uh, interwoven cardboard method uh, and some plaster cloth. And so far, it's pretty solid. I mean, I can pretty much jiggle the layout, as you can see, by pushing on that mountain. So it's pretty solid. I'm pretty happy how it turned out. Of course, after I did the plaster cloth, I put on the uh, primer and that allowed me to do some of this weathering as far as uh, the gray tones in the mountain. I did decide to leave the peaks uh, white. I did put a little bit of paint on them just so that they wouldn't soak in anything externally, fingerprints, stuff like that, easily to clean. The wife actually brought that as an idea and um, I kept it. I really like it. Gives it a little bit of depth. Um, definitely going to be doing some scenery and some trees and stuff here. As you can see, I've already started. This is sort of the wife's area of the layout. Uh, we have our little garden house here. I made some garden beds out of uh, some cribbing material, a few popsicle sticks, uh, just to kind of create a false bottom. So we're going to put some uh, false dirt in there and some plants and stuff like that. So the wife is a big gardener. Uh, that's what her go-to hobby is. And so want to give her a little place to have some fun too in the layout. Uh, so I made this again with the plaster cloth and um, the structure internally. And so what I did was basically use the, what I had laying around as far as making this structure and creating this shape and getting the height to it. So I'm about 6'2". So off the floor, this mountain comes up to probably about five and a half feet now to the layout table. We're looking at about two feet, uh, maybe two and a half to the peak. So I wanted to be able to keep it somewhat reasonable. So when we do lift this up out of the way on the off seasons. Uh, this still doesn't hit the ceiling. So it gives us some good depth, some good realistic um, mountain peaks without being too crazy. So what I did to create this shape was, again, use what I had at my disposal that was basically free because let's face it, what's under here is never really going to be seen. Uh, so I got creative. I actually used uh, Temptation Cat Tree Containers because I have now two kitties. You've seen my first fur baby in some of my videos before, Kiki. Uh, we do have a new member of the family, uh, Topo. Uh, he joined us in August. That's uh, the wife's uh, new baby. And um, he is rambunctious and definitely has been on the layout quite a few times. 
destroying my trees. But um, what I found with these cat containers is they are very rigid and solid. They give great height. So I've stacked a few on top of one another, created sort of that foundation. And then with some paint sticks and some other various things with that cardboard interwoven, was able to build up and get the height. And again, very rigid. Um, haven't noticed anything as far as it being any compromise to the structure. So use what you have. Um, it's uh, worked great for me and it's free and, uh, you know, gets the job done. So one other thing I did to the mountain on the backside is add this sort of access panel to where if we do have a derailment or something of the sort, we have easy access inside the tunnel. Do any maintenance work, track cleaning, anything like that. Makes it super convenient. I think this is something that everybody should consider if you have something large like this to have uh, access anytime you may need it. So not too much to speak on with the turntable area. We did go through and put ballast through the tracks and the middles. Um, we do have sort of our automated scene. I'm not sure if I ever showed that or not, but these little guys are welding up and doing different stuff. So just again, a little, add a little action, a little small detail to the area. We did put our switch tower, a Southern unit that I found in my friends, of course, at the train loft in Winston-Salem. If you're ever in the area, definitely check those guys out. Jeff's great, has a lot of cool stuff at his shop. This one does light up. Initially it had a base. I did take that off because I didn't really like the way the base looked. Here in the center of the layout, I decided to have the town, but do it a little bit elevated above base level. So being kind of this mountainous vibe that the layout gives off, I wanted to add some more depth and by raising these buildings a little bit off of the base layer, it gives that perception that this is kind of a mountainous area. You have the hills, you have sort of those areas that isn't perfectly level. So by stacking up a few pieces of foam, I was able to create this area to where we have the four buildings as sort of this uh, small little downtown area. And also put a little bit of a roadway here. I have sort of this walkway where the town square is, where the people are overlooking to be able to see uh, the town square down below, the trains going by. Uh, as well with this piece of foam here and adding a little bit of a backdrop, I as well kind of give a little bit of a view to see kind of this mountain in the background, but also separate sort of that roundhouse in the back or the round table, I should say. Uh, so depending on where you're looking uh, around the layout, you get kind of a different view to different perception. So I really thought that helped liven up and break up some of the scenes a little bit. And I'm really happy how this turned out. So with it being kind of elevated, I did use some of the retaining wall material around the edges with some of the plaster to kind of create some of these rock faces just to kind of break up a little bit and hide some of that foam. So all four of these buildings are Woodland Scenics, and I think they make, if not the best buildings in O scale, it has to be right up there. I really enjoy the detail they put into them. A little bit pricey sometimes, but I think you get what you pay for. Uh, I also enjoy the lighting that they have. The TV store here in the back is my favorite. It has uh, the small TVs that kind of flicker that really gives it some really good realistic detail. So uh, I really enjoy these buildings, especially the outside. Some of those have kind of the signs on them. You have some of these outside items like the ice chest, the dumpsters, the gas meters, small things like that really bring them to life. And I really like these for that fact. Menards make some great buildings. I have a couple for the price. You definitely can't beat those, but Woodland Scenics definitely turns it up a notch with their buildings. So the next one is this ridge. This one's been in quite a few videos, but I never really talked too much about it. This one here I use foam stacked up, glued together, and then use the drywall compound to sort of shape the rocks and make the realistic looking kind of ridges and whatnot. Put in the signal here, use some retaining wall material, kind of again add a few details and a little bit of depth to it. So the last big area that really is unfinished is right here in the middle, sort of what we're going to consider and call the town square. And as you see, we have began to create that. The wife wanted an area to sort of put seasonal items and I kind of like the idea too. So Christmas time, maybe a little tree here, Halloween we can do some decorations. 
Believe it or not, the center stone is actually made from an old box from a pair of Apple uh, ear pods. And so just use a little bit of that retaining wall material, paint it to the top gray, give it a little bit of texture, just kind of like uh, concrete. And so this is coming together. We definitely have some work to do on finishing the details, but uh, over the next few weeks, we will finish this. And then this area here, we're not really sure yet. Maybe some roads, sidewalks, maybe another building here. It's going to kind of come together this winter. But overall, this little town area definitely is taking shape. Let's talk now about some of the newest additions to the collection. First up is this. Uh, no, no other way to describe it, for me at least, is just an absolutely drop-dead gorgeous cab forward. This is in the Southern Pacific Lark paint scheme. And I have not really seen too many of these shown here on YouTube. But I think some people slept on this one, to be quite honest. So what I like most about the color is the fact that it can really show off all of the great detailing that's on this locomotive. Comes to the hoses for the sand, towers, the gear for the whistle, steam pipes. Now I kind of slept on the cab forwards initially when they came out, when Lionel re-released them. And I kind of regretted it at first. And this Lark really caught my eye for a while. But I pretty much just chalked it up the hay, missed out. You know, everybody pretty much sold out of them. But this one actually popped up on Train World's website back at Labor Day. I'm not sure if they found one sitting around in their warehouse or the stock. Just kind of got miscounted or what, but being as this wasn't a new release, I was able to take advantage of Train World's Labor Day savings. So I got this brand new, pretty much 10% off, already discounted price because it was a little bit of an older model. So got this one at a very, very good deal. Very pleased with this engine. Very happy I purchased it. It looks great running around the layout. Love the color scheme, as I said. Couldn't be happier. Another recent addition, I actually just got this one yesterday is this MTH AC44. This is part of Norfolk Southern's original conversion from DC to AC. And found this one used on eBay and it actually has quite a few miles on it. But I tested it out and everything runs great. I'm starting to appreciate MTH engines a little more. They definitely have a lot of great detail. Another recent eBay find this Jersey Central Lines MTH Norfolk Southern Heritage Series locomotive. I'm starting to keep my eyes open on these, starting to collect the Heritage Series. I do have the Southern already from MTH. So uh, I'm going to try to pick these up when I find good deals. You know, obviously these can be a collector's item. A lot of them online right now that I see on eBay, there's a few, but they're like 700 bucks. Whereas this one here, Took a chance on it. It was only a couple photos. And it was 250 bucks. And it has like 60 scale miles on it. Runs great. Everything's perfect. Except it is missing one of the sun visors here for the cab. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. Another one hiding here in the background was the Southern Pacific. No real reason I needed this. Uh, other than it was, again, pretty cheap on eBay. It was listed as a non-power. And technically it is at the moment, but what I found out was this actually originally was a powered unit. Someone just took the motor out of it. Another recent addition is this Norfolk Southern Honoring Our Veterans unit. Patch Trains actually sent an email that they found some of these in stock. These are brand new. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was like $300, brand new in the box. So to me, it seemed like a no brainer, it seemed like a steal brand new at that price. This is a little bit of an older engine when Lionel came out with them. I'll post up here the year. I don't remember exactly, but uh, I did like the colors. I, I thought the blue was, was nice looking on the front end. So pulled the trigger and bought it. And what's really neat is just recently within the last week or two here, uh, mid September, 2023, Norfolk Southern actually had this one pulling the rocket train that came through. Uh, going down to Florida and this was leading that unit. So being as I have the rocket train that Lionel just released, 
I was like, well, that's just kind of perfect timing that I picked this up. So moving on to some rolling stock and speaking of the rocket train, I stumbled across this Warrior River Southern passenger car that was part of the original MTH uh, rocket train set. And from my knowledge, from what I have read online, this was actually the car that originally was with these rocket trains when they were really running back and forth back when the NASA program was in full swing for uh, the Challengers. So definitely grab this up. It was definitely a great find because they didn't really sell these cars separately from my understanding. They only came with the sets. And so this is definitely prototypical. Next up is the Santa Fe Crane Car and Boon Car. Um, these are just absolutely fantastic. I love the fact that when Lionel made these, they were all motorized with the legacy controller. You can move this up, the boom, the hooks, everything. Boom Car gives sound, which is absolutely fantastic. I did over the summer stock up a little more on my intermodal cars. I added a few more to collection, in particular, the ones that have graffiti. And they were affordable. They had been around for maybe the last year, so a lot of places you have them sort of, I would say, on sale. You can get them at a good price. Next are the auto carriers. These are the new ones that Atlas just came out with. And I almost missed out. I did have these pre-ordered uh, from Charles Rowe. And unfortunately, my credit card was compromised earlier this year. And I had used it on a few pre-orders and course after I had to take care of that they gave me a new card number and guess what card didn't work when these came in to add to that drama for whatever reason my email service decided that Charles Rowe was spam and guess what I didn't see the original emails that they sent me it was almost two months before I really realized hey these had dropped and I had a pre-order and I may be screwed Luckily, when I reached out, they actually still had my order held for me, even after trying to communicate with me a few times and no response for me. So shout out to Charles Rowe. Can't believe that I almost missed out on these as they are just absolutely unbelievable in the detailing. Under Last but certainly not least is the new train shelves. These are from MrTrain.com. I have a video kind of outlining how I installed these, a little bit of tips and tricks. You can check it out here up in the corner. So this is something that I've been looking to do for a while. And of course, a little pricey, especially for the amount of shelves that I bought. But I think in the end, if you're going to spend the money that we do on this hobby, you should invest a little bit in keeping your trains looking good with being able to have easy access to them and overall, uh, keeping them in easy reach to get them to the layout, which is what I really enjoy about these shelves. I love that I can have a complete train here now. I don't have to have kind of odds and ends and pieces and stuff kind of scattered about. As well, for me, it makes it really easy now to run different trains a little more conveniently. Before, I had cars kind of all over the place, so there's something I want to kind of have on a layout for a little while. You know, certain, you know, like the tank train, for example, or the coal train, I could go ahead and pre-stage these here but if I want to run something different, quickly put them back on this shelf, grab the next thing, good to go. I think they turned out really well, looks really clean, also much more efficient. If you remember some previous videos, I had, of course, the control center here. Now that's utilized over in the corner, which is a much better use of that dead space. And overall, very, very happy with how these turned out. So that's it for the layout update. Uh, lots happened, of course, since the last time that uh, I've kind of did one of these, as I said. Lots more to come this year. We're going to do some excursion trips, have a couple planned, so keep eyes out for some videos about that. Also, we have some pre-orders coming, of course. Uh, the Big Boy, I know there's plenty of videos out there. I'm super excited. Childhood dream, always own one. Finally getting one. Can't wait till that comes out. And who knows? We'll see what else kind of comes about this season. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. If you like what you see, subscribe. If you have any questions, comment below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.